today let's talk about solar cells I'm using for my CubeSat, how I'll connect them together, and the maximum power point converter I'm using to pull energy from them. Here I have two different types of IXYS solar cells. The first is the lower voltage but higher milliamp output cell, the 14X1F, and the, uh, the second is the higher voltage but lower milliamp output, 05X3F. As I mentioned before, these solar cells are essentially the only option when it comes to small commercially available cells that have decent performance data and aren't fragile either. These cells even have a little bit of encapsulation on them. There's a layer of substrate and then a material over the top of it. I've done some super basic testing and I've been able to get about 20 milliwatts out of this higher voltage cell under a slightly overcast day, and I'm going to test more under a clearer sky just to see if I can actually get 30 milliwatts out of these cells. So how do I get useful power out of these solar cells? I'd like to target a five volt output and use that as an input for my battery charger since there's a ton of options for five volt battery chargers since that's the default USB voltage. So I have found the LTC 3130 or the 3129, which is a lower current version. Uh, this is a buck boost converter where I figure I can hook up my solar input into this converter and I can have it output 5 volts. I picked this converter because it has maximum power point tracking or what it calls in its data sheet maximum power point control. It has that as an input pin to be able to better track the power output of these solar cells. Here are the inefficiency curves for the 3130 or the 3129 for generating a 5 volt output under PWM mode. And as you can see, they are most effective with an input between 3.6 volts and 5 volts. So my solar cell output ought to be between that range. So that means I'm targeting the maximum power point of the solar cells being between 3.6 volts and 5 volts. Anyway, the question now is if this represents one side of the cube set, how would I wire up all six sides of the cube set? In a previous video, I presented the idea of having each of the six solar inputs feed into their own regulator and then from that regulator feed into a ideal diode which would essentially or together all of the power inputs and then output that into a battery charger. This might be the most power efficient strategy however it is not the most space efficient and it's not the most cost efficient. Each one of these regulators, the LTC3130 or the 3129, is roughly $7, which is pretty small, but for what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to minimize cost. So having six of these isn't necessarily a great idea. The ideal diode controller as well, the LTC4415, I would need three of them since this is a dual input chip. I'd have one here, here, and here. Again, these are $7 parts. Still not that expensive, but I have to have three of them. I think that there is a better layout to better optimize board space and cost. In this layout, I still have the six solar inputs. However, they're all feeding into these reverse current blocking diodes or just shot key diodes. And then they are all connected in parallel. And then they go into just one regulator. Notice in this that the ideal diodes are out of the picture. I don't need those anymore. Uh, since I'm just using low forward voltage shot key diodes to or together all of the solar cells, then I only need one LTC3130 to convert the solar cell input into a consistent 5 volt output for the battery charger. The reason I can connect these solar cells in parallel and the reason why, although it is simpler, it results in a lower power, overall power efficiency, is based on the IV curve of these solar cells. What I have drawn here is just a basic amps versus volts graph of different curves of a solar cell under different varying light conditions where you can see it's outputting the most amps uh, and the most volts under the highest light condition and under less light, it's outputting less. If the CubeSat is in the sun, three sides of the, of the CubeSat would likely be incident to the sun. So for this example, let's say side one, two, and three are all exposed to the sun. However, they're not exposed to the sun all at the same level, just based on how the CubeSat could be tilted. One side's facing it more than the other two. So let's say side one is getting the most light and it has this curve up here. Side two is this one and side three is this curve. And for the sake of example, let's say that we are extracting the maximum amount of power from 
solar side one and its voltage is this. And if, there, if all these solar cells are connected together in parallel, the highest voltage from side one will fix the voltage for the other two sides. So if we trace this down, we can see that the we can see that side two would be getting would be performing down here where it is actually outputting less amperage than what its maximum power point could be. And tracing it down for side three, you can see that it'd be outputting much fewer amps than its maximum power point. So we end up losing some efficiency because we have these diodes, but it makes it much simpler. And that's what I'm going for right now. As I said before, the LTC3130 or the 3129 has maximum power point control or maximum power point tracking capability. And it does that, if we look at the IV curve again, it does that using a set voltage. So you can set a voltage on a pin of the 3130 and essentially if the input voltage drops below that set voltage, the chip will automatically current limit the input as to increase the voltage back up to a point where um, it approaches the maximum power point. So I think there's a trick with setting this voltage where you don't actually want to set it at, at the maximum power point. You want to set it a little bit to the left of the maximum power point because if the solar cell ends up producing more power than you currently need, that's okay. The voltage will float higher or over to the right and there won't actually be any current limiting. It's only when you're under load when you really need to care about the current limit. Also, this deals with solar panels under different varying light conditions. If you set the maximum power point voltage only at the highest light condition, so if you set the voltage over here, that might not help you much for the other curves when you're experiencing less light. So you might not be able to actually harvest any energy from a lower light condition. The disadvantage of the LTC3130 is that it doesn't provide a more advanced maximum power point tracking or control algorithm where a better algorithm would scan the entire range of inputs to actually find the maximum amount of power that a given solar cell input could generate. That's the more advanced feature that I would have liked to had. However, I couldn't quite find something that I wanted. I found some chips that did that scanning. However, they were explicitly battery chargers. This LTC3130, this chip, it isn't a battery charger. It just creates a voltage output, which I really like, because then I can use a separate battery charger that has more of the functions that I want. Also, the chips I found with the better maximum power point tracking algorithm, they were explicitly for a higher voltage input, which in theory I could do, but I decided not to at this time. Anyway, that's all I have for now. I think I'm gonna continue testing with these solar cells and see how they perform. Hopefully they live up to their 30 milliwatt expectations, but I think they're gonna make a good, cheap, basic solar cell for my CubeSat. Thanks for watching.